Hello, this evening we have another folk tale from old Russia. This one is called Finnist the Bright Falcon. Um, this is, so this is it. Once upon a time, long ago in old Russia, <clears throat> there was once a peasant whose wife had died, <clears throat> leaving him with only three daughters. The old man wanted to hire a housekeeper to look after the house. But Mayushka, the youngest daughter, said, There's no need for a housekeeper, father. I will look after the house myself. And so it was agreed. Mayushka began to look after the house. She knew how to do everything, and everything went well. The father loved Mayushka and was happy that he had such a clever and hard-working daughter growing up. More than that, Mayushka was as pretty as any picture. Her sisters, though, were envy and envious of her and mean to her. They were not beautiful, but terribly fond of fashion. They spent all their time powdering and rouging their faces and dressing up in new clothes. All they thought about were dresses, boots, and shawls. One day the father was setting off to market and asked his daughters, What should I buy for you girls to make you happy? And the two daughters said, Buy us a kerchief each with a pattern of big flowers worked in gold. But Mayushka stood silent. Her father asked again, What should I buy for you, daughter? Father, I want nothing but a feather of the finest the bright falcon. When he returned, the father brought the her kerchiefs for the eldest, but he couldn't find the feather. The time came for the father to go off to market again. Well, my girls, <laughs> order your presents. The two eldest daughters were delighted. Buy us a pair of boots with silver heels. But Mayushka again answered, Father, buy me only a feather of Phyllis the Bright Falcon. Father went around the market the whole day. He bought the boots, but he couldn't find the feather and came home without it. The old, the, uh, the old man went off to market a third time, and the two eldest girls said, Buy us a dress each. But Mayushka again said, Father, all I want is a feather of Phyllis the Bright Falcon. The father spent the whole day looking, but he couldn't find the feather. As he was leaving town, he met an old, old man coming the other way. Good evening, grandfather. Good evening to you. Whether are you bound? Home to my village, grandfather. But it's with a heavy heart that I go. My youngest daughter asked me to buy a feather and finish the bright falcon, and I couldn't find it for her. I have such a feather. It is very dear to me, but for the sake of a good person, I am willing to part with it. The old man took out the feather and handed it over. Then he looked to, it looked to be nothing special about it. The peasant rode home, wondering why it was so important to Mariushka. The father brought his daughters, the two elders quickly dressed up and poked fun at Mariushka. You are always a silly fool. Stick your feather in your hair and show off. Mariushka kept quiet, avoided their company. Then, when everyone had gone to bed, she tossed the feather on the floor and whispered, Dear Finnis the Bright Falcon, appear to me, my long-awaited suitor, and a young man, more handsome. More handsome than can be described, indeed appeared to her. At dawn, he struck the floor, turned into a falcon. Maryushka opened the door for him, and the falcon flew into the blue sky. Three times, Marushka welcomed her suitor. By day he flew as a falcon through the Asia skies, but when night came, he flew to Marushka and became a fine young man. On the fourth day, her wicked sisters noticed and told on her to their father, Dear daughters, you would do better to look, f to, look to yourselves. Very well, the two girls thought, let's see how things develop. They struck sharp knives into the window frame and then hid to watch what would happen. The bright falcon flew down. It came to the window. It couldn't get into Mariushka's room. He struggled and struggled, cut his breast to ribbons. But Mariushka slept on and didn't hear. And then the falcon spoke. Whatever leads me will find me, but it won't be easy. You will find me when you have won all three pairs, when all three pairs of iron shoes broken three wooden staves, and torn three iron hats. Mariushka heard this, leapt out of bed, and looked out of the window, but the falcon was gone, leaving only bloody marks in the pane. Mariushka went out, wept bitterly, 
washed the bloody marks away from her tears, and became more beautiful than ever. She went to her father and said, Do not scold me, father. I must go on a long journey. If I live, we shall see each other again. If I die, then that is how it was meant to be. The father felt very sorry for his Frederick father, but he agreed that she should go. Baryushka had three pairs of iron shoes made, three iron staffs, and three iron hats, and set off on a long journey to find her beloved, Venice the Bright Falcon. She walked across open steppes, through dark forests and over tall mountains. The birds sang jolly songs to gladden her heart. The streams washed her fair face, and the dark woods greeted her, and nothing could harm Baryushka. Grey wolves, bears, foxes, all wild creatures came running to her. She wore out a pair of iron shoes, broke an iron staff, tore an iron heart. One day Marushka came out into a clearing and saw there was a hut on chicken legs turning round. Marushka called out, Hut, oh hut, stand with your back to the trees, your front to me. I want to get in any thread. The hut turned so its back was to the trees and its front to Marushka. The girl climbed in. And there before her eyes stood Baba Yaga, with a leg of bone sitting there, her legs from one corner to the other, her lips on a shelf, and her nose grown to the ceiling. Baba Yaga caught sight of Marushka and called out, Pish and pa! I smell the stench of Russian blood. Well, my pretty one, are you looking for an adventure, or looking to avoid one? I am seeking Finnis the Bright Falcon, Grandmother. Very well, my pretty one, you'll find him soon enough. Your bright falcon is a land far, far away. The enchantress Tsaritsa gave him a potion and made him marry her. Take this silver dish and gold egg. When you come to that land far, far away, go to work for the Tsaritsa. When you have done your work, take the dish. Put the gold egg in it and it will roll of its own accord. When you are asked to sell it, refuse. Ask to see Finnis, the bright falcon. But Yushka thanked Baba Yaga and went out her way. The forest grew dark. Yushka grew scared. She hesitated to take another step, when all of a sudden she heard a little sound. Meow, meow. A cat came and brushed up across the leg. He sprang towards the bird. <coughs> Don't be afraid, Mariushka. Go on. It will get even scarier. But you keep going and don't look back. The cat rubbed his back and was gone. Marushka went on for it and grew darker still. Marushka walked and walked. She wore out a pair of iron shoes, broke an iron staff, and tore an iron heart, and came to a hut on chicken legs. Around it stood a fence of stakes, with a skull on each side, and each skull glowed with light. Marushka called out, Hut, oh hut, stand on your back to the trees, your front to me. I want to get in and eat bread. The hut turned so its back was to the trees, and its front to Marushka. The girl climbed in. There before her stood Baba Yaga with the leg of a stoke bone sitting there, her legs from one corner to the other, her lips on a shelf and her nose grown into the ceiling. Baba Yaga caught sight of Marushka and called out, Pish and pa! I smell the stench of fresh and blood. Well, my pretty, once you are looking for an adventure or looking to avoid one, I am seeking Phyllis the Bright Falcon, Grandmother. Have you seen my sister? Yes, Grandmother. Very well, my pretty one. I shall help you. Take this silver embroidery hoop and gold needle. The needle will embroider of its own accord with gold and silver thread on silver crimson velvet. When you are asked to sell it, refuse. Ask to see it finish the right falcon. Mariushka thanked Baba Yaga and went on her way. The forest was full of noises, cracks and whines, skulls lit up trees. Mariushka grew afraid. She looked and saw a dog running towards her. One, 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 one! It was a Japanese dog, and no, I was just joking. Mariushka, don't be afraid, my dear. Go on, it will get even scarier, but don't look back. It spoke and was gone. Mariushka went on, and the forest grew darker still. Roots caught her legs, branches snagged her arms. Mariushka walked and walked, but didn't look back. A long time went by, and maybe a short one, and she wore out a pair of iron shoes, broke an iron staff, and tore an iron hat. She came to a clearing, and there stood a hut on chicken legs. Around it stood a fence of stakes, with a horse's skull on each one, and each skull glowed with light. Mayushka called out, Hut, oh hut, stand on your back to the trees, your front to me. I want to get in and eat bread. The hut turned so its back was to the trees, and its front to Mayushka. The girl climbed in and saw Babi Agar with a leg of home sitting there, her legs from one corner to the other, 
Her lips on a shelf and her nose drone into the ceiling. Baba Yaga caught sight of Manushka and called out, Pishinpa! I smell the stench of Russian blood. Well, my pretty one, are you looking for adventure, looking to avoid one? I'm seeking Phyllis the Bright Falcon, Grandmother. You have a, you will have a hard time finding one, my pretty one. But I shall help. Here, take this silver distaff and gold spindle. Pick it up. It will spin of its own accord. Not ordinary thread, but gold. Thank you, Grandmother. Thank you. Thank you can wait. And listen not to what I tell you. And listen now to what I tell you. When you are asked to get the gold spindle, refuse. Ask to see Finis the Bright Falcon. Marushka thanked Baba Yaga and went on her way. The forest cracked and howled. Owls cricked. Round. Mice came out with their holes and all made fun of Marushka. The girl saw a grey wolf running towards her. Don't despair, he said. I helped the young boy once, and now I shall help you. Climb on me and don't look back. Marushka climbed under the grey wolf, and they flew like wind. Ahead lay broad steps, velvety meadows, rivers of honey, banks of kissel, mountains reaching to the clouds. Marushka rode on and on until they appeared before her, a crystal palace with a carved porch and a patterned window, and looking out of that window was the Tsaritsa. Well, said the wolf, off you get, Marushka. Go and get yourself tired as a servant. Mishka climbed off, took her bundle, and thanked the wolf, and went to the crystal palace. Mishka bowed to the wolf, and then she went to the Tsaritsa, and she bowed to her. I do not know your name or title, but do you need a servant for your household? The Tsaritsa replied, I am but looking for a servant, but she must be able to spin, weave, and embroider. Oh, I can do all that, then come in and start work. The Tsaritsa. So Mariushka became a servant. She worked all day, and when evening came, Mariushka took the silver dish and gold egg and said, Roll, roll, gold egg, around the silver bowl, show me my sweetheart. The egg rolled round the silver bowl, and Phyllis the Bright Falcon appeared. Mariushka looked at him, and her eyes filled with tears. Phyllis, my Bright Falcon, why did you leave me alone to weep bitterly over you? The Tsaritsa heard these words and said, Mariushka, sell me the silver bowl and gold egg. No, said Mariushka, they are not for sale. I can give them to you, though if you let me look upon Finis the Bright Falcon. The Tsaritsa thought long and hard. Very well, she said, so be it. Tonight when he is asleep, I shall show him to you. Night came, and Marushka was allowed into her bedroom to see Phyllis the Bright Falcon. She found her beloved fast asleep. She looked and looked, and could not look her fill. She kissed his sweet lips, and pressed herself to his chest. But her darling slept on into did stir. Morning came, and Marushka had failed to watch her sweetheart. Marushka worked all day, and when evening came, she took the silver embroidery hoop and gold needle. She sat down over her needlework and said to herself, So, so, pardon for Phyllis the Bright Falcon. Make a fine town for him to drag himself in the mornings. The Tsaritsa heard this and said, Mayushka, sell me the silver embroidery hoop and gold needle. No, I will not sell them, said Mayushka, but I will give them to you if you let me see Phyllis the Bright Falcon. The Tsaritsa thought long and hard. Very well, she said. So be it. Come again tonight. Night came, and Mayushka was allowed into the bedroom to see Phyllis the Bright Falcon, but he was fast asleep. Oh, Phyllis, wake up! Oh, my Bright Falcon, get up! Phyllis the Bright Falcon slept soundly. Try as she might, Mayushka could not wake him. Morning came, and Mayushka sat down to work. She took up the silver distaff, gold spindle, and the Tsaritsa saw them. Oh, do sell them to me. No, I will not sell them, said Mayushka, but I will give them to you if you let me see Phyllis the Bright Falcon, if only for an hour. Very well, said the other, thinking to herself. She'll never wake him anyway. Night came, and Mayushka was allowed into the bedroom to see Phyllis the Bright Falcon, but he was fast asleep. Phyllis, my Bright Falcon, wake up. Oh, do get up. Phyllis the Bright Falcon steps down and tries as she might. Mayushka could not wake him. Dawn was approaching, and Mayushka burst into tears. Oh, my darling Phyllis, my Bright Falcon, wake up, get up, look upon your beloved Mayushka. Oh, press her to your heart. One of Mayushka's tears 
fell on the bare shoulder, thinnest, the bright falcon, and it scalded him. Ah! Thinnest the bright falcon awoke, looked around, and saw Mayushka. He hugged it and kissed her. Is it really you, Mayushka? Have you worn out three pairs of iron shoes, broken three iron staffs, and pawn three iron hats, and found me? Let's go home now. They started to prepare for the journey, but the Tsaritsa noticed and gave orders to sound the trumpets, announce her husband's betrayal. <laughs> the princes and merchants gathered and began to discuss how Finnis the Bright Falcon should be punished. Then Finnis the Falcon, Bright Falcon spoke up. Which do you think is the real wife, the one who loves firmly, or the one who sails and deceives? All agreed that the true wife of Finnis the Bright Falcon was Maryushka. The couple hugged and kissed and they returned to their own country. There they had a great feast, sounded the trumpets from the battlements, <laughs> fired the cannons, <laughs> and the feast, they had such a great feast that was such a great event that people remember it even to this very day. The end. And that was the story of Finnis the Bright Falcon. Now, if you enjoyed that story, perhaps you would enjoy a great, wonderful retelling of it by Deacon Nicholas Kotar, called The Heart of the World, part of the Raven Sun books. They are a very good read, very good story. Maybe not as good as the original, but still very good nonetheless. So that is all for Russian Folktale uh, Sunday. I um, uh, should tell you another one. I don't know when, but we shall see. Good night for now. Bye.